Okay. Hey guys, so welcome back to another one. Today we're going to be reading another Fun Day Freddy X Reader. This one is called Fun Day Freddy X Female Reader. So, I don't know why, but I think Fun Day Freddy is my favorite it's just location character because I think he's cute. Because <laughs> you imagine if I was in the break room and then I said that out loud. Oh my god. He would start kissing me. POV. Guys. In, a com in the comments down below, make a POV, POV, you're, while you're in the break room, you accidentally said Freddy is hot out loud, but then Freddy started to kiss you and you liked it, and you had sex with him, I'm just kidding. Anyway, this, let's get started, if you're enjoying, 13 plus please, guys be scared, guys be warned. Okay, I'm gonna lay down because my back was hurting in school today, and the day before. Thirteen plus, please. After being dared to break into Circus Baby's Pizza World, along with three more unlucky souls, Sophia instantly knew things were going downhill. Separated from her companions, she, she ends up in the clutches of a psychotic animatronic bear known as Fun Time Freddy. Will Sophia find a way out, or is her fate sealed below the surface? Point of view: Trigger warning for this card is going to be pretty much the same as the way it's going. Triggered by the following chord. So she don't read. I don't have the ending for the Freddy or the Freddy or make sure. That's why I say the seven blade size. So she don't read. Please don't read. I'm trying to read. I'm not screaming. I don't know. Don't worry. I hope y'all you decide to stick around. I hope you enjoy. All right, let's get started. Chapter one: Sneaking Trouble. So I don't know. All right. Okay, here we go. At what point? At what point did it get this bad? Okay, so you're at the party, everything was going well. You met many f new people, so which you liked the best, other the others less. But overall, a nice bunch. But now, but how have you gotten to the point where instead of dancing and having fun, you're walking in the middle of the night, most likely to your death? Well, all this is a result of one dumb game which either dare. Or most likely just stairs, which a group of people have collectively decided it was a great idea. They spent the bottle four times saying that they have a perfect idea for four people. A little adventure. The bottle unfortunately landed on you and very and you were very unhappy about that. You're even more humpy unhappy when you heard the actual dare was. You tried the reason with them but they wouldn't budge. In fact they said if you didn't want to do the dare, they would force you to do something much worse than that. And you were and you didn't really objectify after. So what's the dare anyways? Why break into the why to breaking why breaking into the circus babies pizza world after hours, of course. Scariest so fact wasn't that it was obviously the but rather the animatronics. We've read numerous articles about numerous injuries and even deaths caused by the very things in who, whose lair are you going to be, going to in the middle of the night. It could all be fake. The sites were sketchy, but it still freaked you out. The worst fact it, that was that it was this uh, absolutely would not end well. You are sure. Guys, please, I know that I'm annoying, but... Oh my god, Sophia, shut up already, okay? The other female of the group, Jessica, turned to face you, a scowl plasma on her face. You think I want to be here? I could be kissing a hot guy right now, but no, I have to go through this dump for it, so this dump plays because of a dumb dare. Sure, not once again. It's something else you continue to offer. I must bear a fool out of you... To you out of the three... Name Andrew turned to face you. I see frowned at him, showing your dissatisfaction. You saw this momentarily stood, waiting for you to catch up and walk beside him. I'm sorry that she's so rude to you. Don't take it with, to your heart. She acts like that with everyone. He smiled, attempting to comfort you, and you weakly smiled back. You appreciated that he was kind. But her hating you wasn't really a concern right now. Guys, you're almost there. The one who's actually excited about this whole thing. Jackson yelled from a great or distance in the front. With that, Andrew and you ran up to him. And Jessica, who came shortly beforehand, 
you know, all together, walk through some bushes, finally seeing the building itself. Wow, it's huge, Jackson said, a big smile plastered on his face. He went all towards it, and you until you ran in front of the doors. As expected, I suspected it was locked. There was also a small note in it, and you looked at it as you began reading out loud. Attention, six babies, piece of wood, seven shame rolled, somebody closed due to the animatronic malfunctions. Their pills only be able to spend two weeks. As a result, our rule of the mental health will be fully safe for children and show and all shows will be scheduled regularly. Guys, be fully safe for children means I think someone was killed in the animatronics. And they don't want it, the animatronic everyone the kids to know that they attack. See you soon. Robotic. Even more creeped out. There it goes most tr- mostly true. Yes, that's great. It seemed like luck is really on our side tonight. Jackson said, showing out a statement. I mean, since the place is closed and it's in the middle of nowhere, no one will catch us sneaking in. But what about the cameras? You asked, thinking about how you would avoid it. Uh, no worries. They don't need, they don't need to look at uh, the footage on the left. We give them a reason to. So we just need to make sure we don't mess anything up and no one will know. You're here. You nodded at that while Jessica scoffed. All right, Jack, but if you figured all that out, how about you get us inside? I'm not planning to spend more time than I have to hear. Oh, that, Jackson said, scratching his head a bit. Before I grin returned onto his face. It was a quick run around the building. Maybe I could find something useful. And with that, he ran off, leaving Andrew, Jessica, and you alone in an awkward silence. Now, i Jack. Later, Jackson and her heard shot. Guys, go behind the building. You ran, You all ran over to him. As you notice, was a stirring. As he, as you know, and you notice he was staring at an open ventilation. We're going to call through that vent. No way. Yes way. You're going to call through that? No way. Yes way. Jackson said with a snicker in response to Jessica's shriek. Well, I'm not going first. Jessica said once again, crossing her arms. Of course you are. The first person should be the tallest one. Jackson replied. As you all looked at Andrew, you, ne- you nervously uh, laughed. Uh, yeah, sure. He walked over to the mall and put his hands inside the ventilation, his forearms barely reaching it. Uh, guy, a little help here? He asked as, as you and Jackson got on the either side of him, guiding him by his sides. Okay, so on the count of three, we'll lift him up. You nodded, Jack, look up. That's from with you, Andrew. Sure thing. Andrew said in despair, still being nervous. He waited three seconds before you abruptly lifted Andrew. A loud bay was heard. Oh, what the heck, guys? I thought you were kind of loud. Andrew said his legs were still were visible, still hanging out of the vent. While his torso was inside. Oh gosh, you're so Andrew. Sorry, Andrew. Is your head okay? Last word. He glanced at, Jex- ja- at Jessica and Jackson. They're both quietly snickering. Ugh, yeah, fine. My head hurts a bit, but. He stopped for a moment, crawling into the vent all the way. There we go. I mean, guys, who's next? You can now see Andrew peeking from the dark vent. Ready to help someone up. I'll go, I guess. Jessica said as she took Andrew's hands, he pulled her up with ease. Now Jessica was supposed to pull Jackson up. It was funny to see both of them struggle. It's always your turn to claim in. You took Jackson's hands, and he almost made you fall on purpose. Jackson saw them. I almost got a heart attack there. He said while holding her hand to your chest as Jackson was laughing like this. Come on, lighten up. It would be useful in the dark vents. He snickered after making that dumb joke, turning around. Crawling behind your other kid's companions. Your companions. He started crawling as well. Only now, noticing how spacey these vents actually were, of course. Considering that they were vents, that is. That was quite strange, almost as if they were made for crawling. After all, if you finally got out, the first and the most obvious thing is that you couldn't notice that there wasn't much light. Actually, you can see th- you can see a thing. It's so dark in here. I hate it. Just go on again, which made you realize that she was standing a bit in front of you. She's right, guys. What are we gonna do? We I doubt our phone lights are gonna do much in complete darkness. 
and you said from behind you, making a slightly jump in surprise. Well, don't you worry, because I always come prepared. I got two flashlights in my backpack. I call it just Jack. That's right. Okay, just give me a moment. Here it is, a burn and rummaging. Someone was tapping their paw on the ground. You figured it was Jessica. Come on already. Suddenly the noise stops, and you reach for Andrew, who is reassuring. Really grabbing, grab your shoulder. You're all still waiting, but nothing could be heard. Jessica walked towards you in a quick pace, clenching onto your arm. You most likely pushed her away if it wasn't for the situation you were on. Jack, like, come on, man, this is funny. And just said, but got no response. He looked over to both of your sides, only seeing silhouettes of Andrew and Jessica. Strange stories with her, and mixed between being dragged and scraping the floor. All of you instinctively backed up, and you definitely freaked out, getting really freaked out until, now until, boo! And the three of you scream, close your eyes, you flash while you're blinding light, count your voice screaming. Jackson was really a jackpot. Oh man, your reactions are priceless! Jackson continued laughing, but none of you were amused. He, hand, he then handed Andrew one of the flashlights who snatched and glared at him. Oh, come on, I was just praying nothing could get so worked up about. I Andrew, sorry, you help. Andrew turned to him once again, still glaring. This, really, this is a, really is a time for the pranks. Just a skill really checking up about this, and you scared Sophia and me as well. But that's the point of a prank. I wanted to stop being so immature, okay? You had your lap, and I put the bull butt down. Bull poop down. You then throw it to you and Jessica. Let's see where we are even are. Where we even are. Where we even are for now. And you point his flashlight to one side. And it was clear that you were in the hallway. The hallway was pretty long and it went both ways. There weren't any windows which explained the darkness. On the left there were male bathrooms. While on the right there were female bathrooms. A little farther was a door that said kitchen. And you assumed that there wasn't really anything to do else t to this. I don't think there's anything else, guys. Should we look around more? You asked and they all nodded. Maybe we should split up. One group can go left and the other can go right. Wait, why don't we split up? I don't want to get attacked. Just go play it yet again, to which you rolled your eyes. Actually, if you want to get out of here, ASAP, maybe we could get around a group so we can check out the place quicker. Andrew said, and Jessica sighed, unwillingly agreeing. But I want to check out the whole place, Jackson whined. And what about the animatronics? We most likely came for them, right? Andrew said once again, obviously trying to get over with this. We'll shake them out together. Don't worry, now let's go. He took your hand without a warning and dra started dragging you right. Both Alex, Jackson and Jessica looked like they were on a protest, but Andrew, but Andrew and you were already halfway out. Why? When you turned to a greater distance away, he turned to you. So we're just dragging you away, but I just figure, figure neither of us wants to be stuck with them. He laughed a bit, looking back at them. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah, they could be a bit too much. Your gaze traveled down to... You're still holding hands. And noticing this, Andrew quickly like a... Uh, oh, so sorry about that. I just wanted to follow me hand. Hey, dude, it's fine. You're probably chuckling. After that, you were silent for a bit until you spoke again. You know, actually, I had fun while you were having that, those conversations. Back at the party, we had a lot in common. We have a lot in common. Well, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, other people were quite nice, too, but I had the most fun with you. He, he smiled brightly. Maybe hey, we could go out sometime after this, then. He said, smiling back. I would love that, I replied. He replied enthusiastically. He looked like he wanted to say something, but then felt, uh, then stopped abruptly. Okay, oh, I think we're here. He turned to look at you, do surroundings. It was a very large room with arcades on one side and one and some type, some kind of shop or, or a prize corner on the other side. And there are lots of posters on the walls, too. He walked closer one of them, observing it. It was a white animatronic bear, where they both high and hat. But they were also loved their purple, and he was smiling in an animatronic way, of course. But the most interesting feature about him was that he had a little hand puppet, a small blue bunny, which you would assume was also an animatronic. 
You know, he's obviously made to look different. He, there's also there's something awful, awfully about off about him. It says ironically, his irises, irises looks to be smaller than they were supposed to be, giving him this unnerving, slightly crazed look. But a robot could be crazy now, could it? You shrugged it off, probably it was just the way he was created. But when you looked at another poster of some kind of a white pink, white pink box, it says look normal sized. Weird. But that was your turn back to look at Andrew. He was looking at he was also looking at the posters. Hey, how about we take some pictures, Andrew, you know, for proof or whatever. Here turn around the face you. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot why we even came here. Heh. <laughs> Take your photos so you You start taking pictures of everything you wear. You took quite a handful. And with that, so I get out as bored further. No, you you and her and Andrew heard towards the noise, fearing the worst. You finally came to the main room, seeing Jessica Jackson who seemed to dress. Is everything okay? You ask confused. No, it's not worthy of a chart. He finally asked. What do you mean? Aren't you supposed to be on the main stage? Andrew asked confused. Yeah, but they don't look for yourself. Jessica said with that. Andrew flashed his flashlight onto the stage. Jacket said it was empty. He thought for a moment. Well, they did say the animatronics were malfunctioning and that they could be temporarily out of order. I assume that they aren't here because, because they were fixing them or something. Jacket turned to tea. Well then, t where do you suggest they may be? While well, you're walking here. And then I spotted a map of the place. It said there's a place behind the stage curtains, but that area is off limits. Jackson wasted no time as he jumped on the stage, moving the curtains out of the way and disappearing. Jackson, wait! He said as he ran up to you, following him behind the curtains. Your flashlight was pointing at something, and his expression was perfectly confused. Is this an elevator? He said both of you walked closer to it. The map writer said there's no underground floor, though. He stated, observing the rather weird looking elevator. Well you said that's just a restricted area. It would make sense why it isn't on the map. As he said that Jackson turned his attention towards the two newcomers, Andrew and Jessica. Jackson just stared at them with a stupid grin on his face, pointing at him at the elevator. No, Jackson, Andrew Kuchkarma stated, and Jackson pouted. Come on, man. Even Sophia is on my side, and this, and on this one, right, Sophia? Jason, Jackson nugged you inside, giving you, and you sighed, giving Andrew a pleading look. Please, Andrew, for this, for just a sec, I just want to go home. Really hope that he could read your thoughts right now. And you sighed, walking a few steps closer. I think all of you are forgetting a rather critical detail. He looked away for the elevator, then looked at Jackson. We have no electricity. Jackson's pal quickly turned into a grin once again as he leaned onto the wall beside the elevator. Oh, why did you worry, buddy? Why were you? Why? While you weren't here, I made a perfect plan. Blank and loud noises heard, and the lights flickered. Flicked. Numerous devices were beeping. Machinery humming filled with silence, and most definitely the lights were back on. Jackson, you dork! Jackson, you idiot! The cameras can see our faces now. Jackson shouted, and Jackson rolled his eyes. There are no cameras in here. You're more observant, please. And you shook his head to that. Jackson, this really isn't a good idea. You and Jackson, you nodded in Jackson's side. Okay, guys, how about this then? We go down, stay here f there for 15 minutes tops, just so that I can take pictures of the Amber trunks. And if you don't get to check the whole place out after 50 minutes, we are out of here. Sounds good, right? Jackson mainly looks at you with hope in his eyes. I suppose you quickly replied. And you were staring at you. For a few moments before finally giving in. Fine, what do you say, Jessica? I just said as he turned to look at her. Even Jackson doing the same. Jessica's gaze flicked up from one each one of you until she finally gave up. Alright, but I will literally count the minutes, Jackson. 
She grumbled and Jackson pumped and it jumped up in excitement. He immediately called up the elevator and when the door opened, Jackson stepped inside. Ladies first, Jessica and you rolled your eyes while you were walking and Jackson followed you and Andrew came in last. Andrew finally pressed the button, making the door the elevator door shut. Here goes nothing. Okay, here you go. I don't know how many pages they will be reading, but whatever. Okay, chapter two, Trapped. Okay. After a few, back from the attack, after a few good minutes of awkward silence, the elevator finally stopped. The doors opened slowly and loudly with each of you carefully stepping out. You were in some kind of control room, of a control room, you assumed. Two big glass windows were on the left and right, while in front of you with rather interesting decorations. There are no doors, which confused you greatly. They did notice three vents, one in the lower part of each wall. Great, more crawling. At least we don't have to jump up in the vents anymore. It's pretty cool down here, right? Jackson broke the silence, obviously. I don't think anyone would find anything. You're cool. They're only creepy claw dolls with spider webs. Jessica replied obnoxiously. Unless you're a weirdo, which you obviously are. She have wondered that to herself. As you look to her left side, observing the stage window. What are these for, anyways? Oh my god, is someone watching us from there? And you look unimpressed as you walk closer to the window. There are no people rather here other than us. Therefore, there is no one who could be watching from the, us from the dark. I think that's obvious. He walks over to the window as well, standing beside Andrew. You're right, but still, if we plan on exploring this place, we should make sure that it's safe. Andrew nodded at your remark. That's true, I guess. I see we have some buttons over here. Maybe buttons? You know, Drew were shoved to the side. Jack's really rich with the two. You now look at City Glenn's place in the little front blue window. Most blue and had a light bulb in it. But the other one was red and had a lightning. I assume the blue one is returning on the light. Andrew stated, and Jackson pressed it without delay. The room behind the window lit up. Or more likely. I was sick of part of the room. It was a small stage, it, believe it or not, and I were real I'm trying to get in. You can see that very clearly what it looked like. That was rather tall and it was wearing a small skirt. Guys, you see that? It's an animatronic. Jackson said excited. Just a good room sight behind the three of you. I that amazed. Obviously. One of you, okay, so one of you will go to see your stupid robot or not. Ten minutes here have already passed. Yeah, yeah, just a moment. Jackson dismissed her. I just dropped the button looking for the other one. I wonder what this was for. He pressed it in a loud and electric tone and was heard from the room where the recited, recited. Followed by an electric spark. He then turned on the blue light again, just which seen the animatronic slightly twitching. You went, as you looked at the poor thing. That must be painful. Jackson went to click button again, but you stopped him. Wait, don't. Jack's looking confused. Why not? It's kind of funny. It's not like a really could feel any pain, right? Ron shot away thinking he took a deep breath. But well, whatever. Let's go check it out. We are wasting. Okay, we are wasting time anyway. He walked over the vent and pressed the button over it and began crawling inside without hesitation. You three her companions soon after. Follow soon after. Motion trigger. Check his below gallery vent. I also have a second for a fear until so Andrew spoke up. Guys, I think that's a variable thing, probably for the tag day, possible trespassers. Like us. Jackson says you snickered. Breathe out in relief as you continue crawling. He finally came out, mostly searching for a light switch. He finally touched the wall until you finally feel the light switch flicking it. And you got jump scared face to face with an animatronic bear. Close to the door, you put your hand over your chest, calming your breathing. 
So sorry, my friend, the poster is but the face of the rich are gonna give you graves first thing after turning on the lights wasn't pleasant. You turn the wall around towards your group, seeing Jackson already rushing towards the stage. You follow as well as the rest of the group. You follow this time, so is there the animatronic. If you design, she assumed it was a female. She had violet hair, but a bun, and was wearing a skirt that you already knows before. Here she was clearly wearing ballerina shoes and was dragging a dance pose. Had her clothes and her eyelids were like were colored purple. Who you think the name him? She asked as he continued observing her. Jessica ex as snorted. Her, what are you talking about? It's like a human or something. Brought her, not too phased about her rude behavior anymore. And you cough and she smiled at you lightly. Well, that kind of. I assume her name is Ballora. You remember what we were calling the other is It's very rugged right crawling into Ballora Gallery. Thankfully, not at Andrew. Okay, guys, let's take a picture and we're good to go. Just Jack took us by all of you closed explore. During the last moments at the Florida Gallery, you took a look around. And honestly, there wasn't really anything too interesting. The place, although clean, looked almost bounded, considering how empty it was. There was a few, still a few decorations and posters were right here and there. The only thing you could say was the out of place was a room, located at the sole out and end of the lower gallery. There was simply a poster that of that creepy bear on it. Except unlike the rest of the room, the door looked like it was continu con continuously scratched or kicked. Overall it looked quite damaged. I wonder what's inside of that. You pulled your are you pulled out your thoughts by a toggle on your arm. It was Andrew, who was signaling that it was time to leave. As you went through the vent, you went to the main room once again. I'll remind you that you have eight minutes left, Jackson. Ja Jessica's book. Yeah, yeah, all right, then. Let's waste no time to get to, into the room on the right. Doug called to the vent. Jessica following neither of them really gave Andrew or you time to reply. While you were calling, the robotic voice alerted you that you were going into the so-called Funda Monitorium. Inside this room, when you entered, the lights were already on. The design of the room was slightly different from the Laura Gallery, but not drastically. The room was definitely smaller. And instead of one extra door, there were three. Posters and decorations were obviously there, and on a slightly bigger stage, was another animatronic. All of you walked closer to his orbit. It was a white fox which towered over all of you, but was shorter than Ballora. Its belly paws, ears, and style were bright pink and had lipstick and colored claws. Unlike Ballora, the image, this animatronic had open, amber-colored eyes. I was standing right ahead of it, blankly. Ugh, and I thought that the ballerina was bad. Just look at this humbly, ugly thing. How could a kid like this, like something, could like something this atrocious? Jessica said in disgust. Your eyes then moved from the animatronic as just made her rude remark. He was torn in the eyes. The fox's eyes flicked, her over, flicked over to her, glaring. He looked a couple of times in disbelief. Get it together, Sophia. It's probably just your mind playing tricks on you. You can't probably move because they're turned off. Reassure yourself, pushing down your overthinking. After you finish taking pictures and looking, I ready. Call back to the main room once again. Four minutes, Jackson, and that's just another take one last room. You might have assumed that there are more rooms. Jeff replied to Jessica. As all of you want to get crawled through a vent right in front of you. You know if you got notified that you crawled in the Circus Baby Auditorium. From what you assumed, the animatronic's name is Circus Baby. 
but to admit you are quite interested in see what you're going to try and get an account encounter here. Now in the room, you notice that it looks like nothing like the last two you're in. First, the most obvious difference was there was nothing that there was, there was yet another glass window. Separating you from the animatronic would most likely be. Jackson really checked the lights, flicking them on repeatedly, but to no avail. Jackson merely checked the lights, flicking them on repeatedly, but no Circus Baby was missing from her stage. They didn't necessarily panic, but there could be another room where they put her to repair her. But it simply wasn't her room. It's other even if it seemed to be seemed rather obvious than it was. However, you did panic as you saw Jackson press the red button. You guess you got an annoyance. Apparently pressing the button. You didn't count, but you could guarantee that it was more than five times. Jackson, 15 minutes past two minutes ago. Come on already. Don't mind him angrily. Oh, shut the heck up already, Jessica. Can't you see I'm trying to do something? Guess, guess ja, Jessica ja, gasped at his outburst. Excuse me, mister, but we had a deal that you proposed yourself. You better get going, because I'm dang sure that none of us want to see any of those ugly things again. Jackson now to Jessica, prepared to move, snap back to land your cut and trying to calm the situation. I'm getting tired, but I'll read till chapter three, and then we'll continue chapter three tomorrow. Ho, ho, hold on, guys. Let's not fight, okay? Jackson, you know you can visit this place anytime you want in the future. You want me such um, a whiny dummy? Why didn't you stay at, just stay outside, ruining all the fun and slowing us down? Oh, are you crazy? You would leave a girl all alone in the middle of nowhere during nighttime. Now I see why you don't have a girlfriend. Just as just a reply, the lights went off. The power was out. It sense again. Why? Why do we want the pizzeria? Don't be crazy. It's just a malfunction. But the light really wasn't your biggest concern. For the fact, the elevator wasn't working. The one way out of here wasn't working. South spoke by Jessica. The blood out screen. This this is all your fault. The huge screen is jogging to turn on the flashlight and again shine. Right your face. Jiggle to cover your face. Jiggling at him. Really, that's a bold statement considering... I was with you the whole time, and I didn't recall messing with any electronic devices. Andrew, after he turned up on his own flashlight, spoke up. It'd be nice to make a plan, considering us getting us out of here, considering you were the one who got us down here. It's Jackson sighed upon reeling that Andrew did have a point. Alright, so let's just crawl back to the main room. I'm pretty sure that there must be another generator on here. There better be. Here, Jessica, murmur as all of you went through the van once again. As soon as you came to the room, you went sorry, we're searching around for anything of value or a clue, and you finally stumbled upon a map of this place. Just by judging at the break room was right next to Blur Gallery. Except there's no often way to get to it. Except we'll to get call go through Blur Gallery. Guys, I found the map. Supposedly, the generator should be in this room right here, back in the boy guy. He said as everyone observed the map carefully. You have to draw their attention. So, who's gonna go? I'm most likely wait for Jackson to speak up. I think there was no way Jessica would go. I didn't want to divorce Andrea go. And Jackson was responsible for this. But he just stared at the ground, avoiding your gazes. You saw slamming the map on your by tail. What? Oh, just go. He began walking to the van until Andrew stopped you. Wait, I'll go with you. He simply nodded at him and went onward. Once he finally got out, the female voice reminded you that you were dating inside below the gallery. And you and your new connected your heads as you walked towards the other end of the room, towards the door. For a moment, you thought you heard a movement, but you dismissed it as a room echo. However, it was obvious that this was the sound of your echo. Once you've heard a faint sound of a music box, 
that blur and you quickly fill your thigh. And then the music got closer. Your heart sank. Why is she moving? You are so sure that she shut down last time you checked, unless she was pretending. You felt chill run down your spine as the music continued closer now. You and Miss Andrew Beard stared at each other, worried looks. You're both thinking the same. You didn't want to know what would happen if she was trying to two of you. So I remember all the creepy stories I read. You got even more nervous. You know, she wanted to be as quiet as possible, though. A finger, lip, finger, quick finger to a lip. It took his hand to tell him someone could, could tell him to continue walking. You two would stop every time she would get closer, pulling in your breaths and staying on each other's toes. At the point she had gotten so close that she was right in front of you. Finally, she door you went for an oven open. You wanted to breathe, breathe, breath out in relief, but decided not to. You opened the door as slowly as you probably got out of light. Very light, like a very light creak was heard as you could hear below it get closer. The other creaked and drew to the side, and you followed close behind, shutting doors. You quietly as you could. Both of you were letting out, letting a breath out. You were finally safe. See you also in the big room. Get ready for the finish. No pun intended. All right, so I'm gonna edit here. I'm getting pretty sleepy. So in the next chapter, chapter three, um. We are gonna see what happens with Andrew and my with me and my friends. These are some long chapters, actually. I shouldn't be doing this at night. I should probably do these in the afternoon. By the way, guys, um, I will see you with chapter three. Bye. Subscribe.